Chapter 6, Great Expectations The months and years went by. I had been Joe's apprentice for four years. One evening, Joe and I were sitting in the village inn. A stranger came in, a big, tall man with heavy eyebrows. The man had large, very clean white hands. To my surprise, I recognized the man. I had seen him at Miss Havisham's many years before. He had frightened me then. He frightened me a little now. I think there is a blacksmith here, name of Joe Gargery, the man said in his loud voice. That's me, Joe answered. He stood up. You have an apprentice known as Pip, the stranger went on. Where is he? Here, I cried standing beside Joe. I wish to speak to you both. I wish to speak to you privately, not here, the man said. Perhaps I could go home with you. We walked back to the forge in silence. When we were in the sitting room, the man began to speak. My name is Jaggers, he said. I am a lawyer in London where I am well known. I have some unusual business with young Pip here. I am speaking for someone else, you understand. A client who doesn't want to be named. Is that clear? Joe and I nodded. I have come to take your apprentice to London, the lawyer said to Joe. You won't stop him from coming, I hope. Stop him? Never, Joe cried. Listen then, I have this message for Pip. He has great expectations. Joe and I looked at each other, too surprised to speak. Yes, great expectations, Mr. Jaggers repeated. Pip will one day be rich, very rich. Pip is to change his way of life at once. He will no longer be a blacksmith. He is to come with me to London. He is to be educated as a gentleman. He will be a man of property. And so, at last, my dream had come true. Miss Havisham, because Mr. Jagger's client must be Miss Havisham, had plans for me after all. I would be rich, and Estella would love me. Mr. Jaggers was speaking again. There are two conditions, he said, looking at me. First... You will always be known as Pip. Secondly, Mr. Jaggers continued, the name of your benefactor is to be kept secret. One day that person will speak to you face to face. Until then, you must not ask any questions. You must never try to find out this person's name. Do you understand? Speak out. Yes, I understand. I answered. My benefactor's name is to remain a secret. Good, Mr. Jagger said. Now, Pip, you will come into your property when you come of age, when you are 21. Until then, I am your guardian. I have money to pay for your education and to allow you to live as a gentleman. You will have a private teacher. His name is Mr. Matthew Pocket and you will stay at his house. I gave a cry of surprise. Some of Miss Havisham's relations were called Pocket. Mr. Jaggers raised his eyebrows. Do you not want to live with Mr. Pocket? Have you any objection to this arrangement? He said severely. No, no, not at all, I answered quickly. Good, then I will arrange everything. Sir Jaggers went on. Mr. Pocket's son has rooms in London. I suggest you go there. Now, when can you come to London? I looked at Joe. At once, if Joe has no objection, I said. No objection, Pipple Chap, Joe said sadly. Then you will come in one week's time, Mr. Jaggers said, standing up. You will need new clothes. Here is some money to pay for them. Twenty guineas. He counted out the money and put it on the table. 
Well, Joe Gargery, you are saying nothing? Mr. Jagger said to Joe sternly. I have money to give you, too. Money? What for? Joe asked. For loss of your apprentice, Mr. Jaggers answered. Mr. Pip has been your apprentice, and now you are losing him. Dear Joe placed his heavy hand gently on my shoulder. Pip must go free, Joe said. Let him go free. Let him have his good fortune. No money can replace the dear child. We've always been the best of friends, Pip and me. Ever the best of friends. Joe could not say any more. He wiped away a tear. And so my life changed. How happy I was. But Biddy and Joe were sad and quiet. This upset me. Why were they not pleased at my good fortune? The next few days passed slowly for me. I bought new clothes, boots, and a hat. I decided to say goodbye to Miss Havisham before I left for London. How smart you look, Pip, Miss Havisham said when she saw me. You look like a gentleman. Why is this? I have had good fortune since I last saw you, Miss Havisham, I said with a smile. I am so grateful, Miss Havisham, so grateful. I know, I know, I, I have seen Mr. Jaggers, Pip, Miss Havisham answered. He tells me you have great expectations. You now have a rich benefactor, and you are leaving for London tomorrow. Yes, Miss Havisham. Well, be good then, Pip, and do what Mr. Jaggers tells you. Goodbye, Pip. You must keep the name of Pip, you know. Goodbye, Miss Havisham. Miss Havisham smiled and held out her hand. I bowed and kissed her. On my last evening at the forge, Biddy cooked a special supper, and I wore my new clothes. The London coach left the town at six o'clock the next morning. I told Biddy and Joe that I wanted to walk to the town alone. Was I ashamed to be seen with them there? I'm afraid I was. I said goodbye to Mrs. Joe, and then to Biddy and Joe. Biddy and Joe were both in tears as I waved goodbye for the last time. I walked on, and then my own tears began to fall. As I got nearer to the town, the morning mist disappeared and the sun shone. I was on my way to London. I was a young man with great expectations. <laughs>